The only problem with us That'd is if you, you give Cy a script, he does stick to it. He won't yeah. deviate from. Yeah, he's. He got I'm, trained. He got I'm trained so from Buck Dynasty yeah. to. Yeah. yeah, I'm so bad about sticking to a script, boys. Uh, he got trained from that, knowing that I know the minimum amount of time we can be here is if I follow this. That's right. So I'm doing exactly <laughs> Which was what exactly say. what my philosophy was. Yeah. Just say what they want so we can get out the door. Yeah, so let's go back. But welcome back to the we Duck Call it. Room. We uh, we have a special guest, an award-winning podcast host, yes. Alan yeah. Roberts. Yeah. Award-winning <laughs> boy. I am now uh, award-winning. Also award known winning. as Perry Mason. <laughs> That's who he reminds me of. Your beard, your beard is Perry Mason. Oh, man. If I just had my wheelchair, I'd be right there. <laughs> hey. As long as you had, hey. Well, I'd just hang on. You it's got coming. bad knees? Old Perry's got bad I knees. I do have bad knees. Yeah, see, hey, I'm telling you. A scooter is in my future, son. <laughs> That's right. Hey. Perry Mason. There you go. Never lost a case. Ne- undefeated. Never lost undefeated. A case yet, baby. Yeah. Him and, Award winning. Hey, him and Walker, winning. Texas Ranger. That's undefeated. Right. That's exactly right. Nobody's ever got either one of Did them. Did you know that I met Chuck Norris? Did you? So I was in an event in um, in D.C., and I was piling around with Mike Huckabee, the old governor of Arkansas. Okay. And so we were talking and visiting. He said, hey, what are you doing right now? So I'm fixing to head to the hotel, and he said, he said, you want to come to a birthday party? And I said, like, ah. and he said, it's Chuck Norris's 75th a uh, birthday party. I said, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I grew up, who didn't grow up yeah. loving Chuck Norris? Yeah. Right? And so we go in there, he comes in, there's only about 30 people. So it's great. So it's kind of a little private event. He comes in, he looks fantastic. He's had a little work done. Uh, a little Botox. <laughs> a little, oh, yeah. a little, a little work done on the face. <laughs> yep. But body wise, I mean, he, he would have, he could have kicked my hind end flat footed, you know, nothing's changed. Well, yeah. 75 no. years old. He told me, so his wife's there. She's a little younger. He had two. He had fifteen-year-old twins. Oh, so oh, hey, me and Chuck got something in common. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Is yours fifteen hey. years? No, but they are twins. They are twins. So they maybe are twins. maybe me and Chuck can start a support group, That's for like well, twin dads. So, the, or so I'm wanting to talk about old movies and all this, and all Chuck Norris wants to talk about is he's he lives in Texas, and he's found an aquifer on his yeah. property. And he said, we're going to make the most amazing water. He sounded like Trump. He was like, it's going to be the best, you know, this water. <laughs> yeah. And so he kept on with this water. And I was like, okay, Chuck, I'll look for it. So anyway, I leave. I go into Brookshire's like five years later, and there it is, Sea Force, yep. Chuck Norris I, water. And yeah. I remember when he was telling me about it. And I have yeah. to say, it's pretty good. I have purchased uh, and drank it's it. It's pretty so, good. Yeah, it is it is good. I feel like water. my water bottle can whip your water bottle anytime it wants to because it's Sea Force. I just was there a Bowflex in there at his birthday party or like you know, had like a Bowflex K? I, no, but I bet there were Bowflex people right there. I, oh, yeah. I think he's like eighty three now because that was like several years ago. So wow, pretty amazing. And pretty, he was like he's like Mister Lee in good yeah. shape. Always. Well, you know, I think he's in a little better shape, Mister well, Lee. Probably so. Yeah. I don't, I don't probably think. The estate side, that. And, and I don't think Chuck has ever just you know went AWOL to Mexico for seven months <laughs> right. because. But maybe. man's got to do what he's got to do. All I got to say about that. It's the uh, in defense of Mister Lee. Hey, man's got to do what he's down there at the fountain of youth. That's right. right. So Al, y'all, you won. Y'all won the award. Unashamed won the best. It what, was what's the title? it was called the Impact Podcast Award. In other words, out of the however many it was that were nominated, allegedly, according to these people, we have the biggest impact, and that and our fans, I guess, that voted for. So, so I need you to be honest with me. What do you think our chances are of getting into that category? Uh, well, I mean the the good news is Sadie's podcast won last year. Our podcast won this year, so I'm thinking if they keep this going, hey, there's it's, hope for us. As long as you got, you do have a Robertson on here, you do have Cy in there, so hey, I'd say hey, there's hope. Boy. I'd say there's hope that you yeah. might could slide in there. Who knows? Hey, okay, that, that would, would be awesome. So I we were up curious. against like uh, we were up against uh, Kirk Cameron's sister. She has a podcast. Uh, uh, Bob Goff. I don't know if you know Bob. But he he has a podcast in there, and they're not a few I didn't know. The rest of them, but you know. It was look, it was amazing. We were, of course, this is one of those big. It's been a while since we've done the award show thing for me, and uh, it was a big like a Christian concert. All these singers there and stuff like that. Of course, Dad was 
on the fence. Oh no! Did you did Phil go? He went like oh, the, the no. two days before. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Zach talked him into going. <laughs> so <laughs> mom said, "I'm out." <laughs> So she just okay, bailed. bailed out. She bailed. I was like, Mom, oh, I can't believe they're doing red carpet and all that. She said, I'm too tired. And I said, Okay. But <laughs> dad went for it, which I was surprised. So it was Jason and Missy. It was me and Lisa, and it was dad. And then, of course, Zach, I guess, was dad's date, you know, because mom wasn't there. So he kind of was probably a safer bet than dad. Well, Jason, <laughs> Jason's first word yesterday when I've seen him, I ain't seen him for, he's been on the road a lot, you know, was I'm poor out. He said, "Yo, Sai, that's his first words to me every time. Every time I you see, see him, him. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. That's just his lead in. Now. He yeah. doesn't I was, say hello. I was he doesn't thinking, say how it's going. I'm worn out. And he hadn't had a good day in years. Oh no, like oh, I'm, I'm just. Well, so I just tired. know he said hey, and then he looked like he was worn out. Yeah, it he was said, this it was, red carpet thing. No, no, nah, that's he, just he, age, poker, and duck hunt. Yeah. That's all that is. Ain't well, it? y'all can totally appreciate it because we, of course, we obviously already talked about it on Unashamed as well, but." So Jace went totally rogue. So he and Missy were presenting an award, and so they sent him, here's what we'd like for you to say. No, no we're not saying that. So, <laughs> so <laughs> Why does that not surprise Shocker. Right yeah, there. shocker. Did Jace have Jace a hat didn't on? didn't say what he was he supposed did. to he say. He did have a hat on. He had an unashamed hat on. Oh. Uh, so it wasn't one of those goofy little hats he okay. wears. It, it, it was actually a, a I was wondering if it was one of his two of his fedora collection. And I, I did, know. and I was wear, I did wear a vest because I know y'all talked about oh, yeah. I heard y'all talked about that on this. Yeah. No. I did never. wear one of my classic hey, vests. Never. Look. Mm-hmm. You're your nice one, though, right? It was my well, nice. It's got a chance to jump on it, somebody. It, was my dress it ain't vest. never gonna be passed up. <laughs> but okay, see, even if he has family. And see, right. people get on me all the time for like making fun of you. And I'm like, here's. Do y'all want to know why we have so much fun with Al? Because he'll give it right back. Exactly. Okay. Like, there is no. no but, hey, you're not gonna get it's away. It's the greatest with this. compliment. You're not yeah. gonna offend this man, no. and he's gonna give it straight sure. back to you. Exactly. But that kind of person. I can joke with. That's exactly right. guess what? I'm the same way. I learned that from preaching. Because not only can he take it, but oh, you know it's coming back to you. Well, and he's generally got a bigger microphone than me. So (laughs) I don't even, that's what's fun about it. Because he's better at it than you are. (laughs) Ask the church folk. They know. Oh, I remember the top uh, ten list. Oh yeah, oh. The top ten lists were always my way oh, yeah. of retribution. <laughs> oh, Paula years. got a top ten one. Paula <laughs> got one. Of course, Paula's just ripe. You know, she's low hanging fruit. Let's face it, for <laughs> for any kind of top ten list. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's a walking waiting to be made fun of. Yeah. is what she is. Here's the thing. Okay, I was happy for y'all personally. Okay, because I've always said it and even shocked it at. at our podcast, my podcast. Okay. Yours. There is it, yeah. Together with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, there is so a I lot. Yeah, yeah. There is a lot of good information that comes out. Well, thank you, Sai. We were no, no, serious. I was hey. Oh, you're talking about his again. No, no. Dead, no, no. I'm talking about ours. Uh, I was shocked that we had some fan write in and something. I've got this problem. And we each gave them our, what we would do with the situation they was in. And I was amazed at everybody's answers. Well, well there's, okay. uh, there's, cause you know, I'm on the road. I'm not lot. as stank as you dumb. I am. What? No, no, the height. That's what I, <laughs> that's what I learned by it, John. God, is you guys are way, way smarter than I gave you credit for. <laughs> oh, so I'm, I'm on the road a lot. And, and obviously a lot of our our listeners are crossover listeners and they, people love y'all's podcast. I mean, there's no doubt about it. And a lot of them are the same ones that listen to ours. And so they always say, you know, how much they enjoy laughing on the, listening to this podcast. But side to your point, they, they love talking about hunting and, and all the stuff you guys talk about. Well, it's the impact is what was, That's you it. Know, the award was for impact. Yes. Okay. And Hey, what we give people as advice it's stuff we've learned from life, living it. Right. It's really going hard for us okay. to win this award now. Yeah. Well, no, no, it. but I'm like just saying it. it was actually, hey, I was shocked at the, the the information that we really actually give out to the folks. Yeah. Okay. It ain't just blowing smoke. It's real based on real things that have happened in our life. Yeah. Okay. So Which I, I mean, think was the appeal of Duck Dynasty to everybody. We're well, just we're real people. Like we're not 
It's a natural next extension. So, yeah. so, so Jace goes eight. So he's presenting. He and Missy another category. So they go totally off script. In fact, the teleprompter guy. So I'm watching them. I look back to the back because you can see the teleprompter on the back wall. And they just dropped it down to, and the nominees are. I mean, they just gave up. <laughs> they what, gave up. Whatever trying. they were supposed to say. <laughs> I look back on the wall because Jace is up here tonight. He's fumbling because he's done. He's gone off script. Yeah. They've taken his script away. Yeah, just yeah. take away. So hey, now it's like, hey, okay, you're just on the nominees. It. So I'm laughing about that. Yeah. So whenever, so we, so we get on the plane to head up there because so, so a fan provided an airplane, which is very nice. So we flew straight yeah. up there. So going up there, we're like, I said, well, who, what are we going to do? Because Zach's not with us, and he's the one that's organized all this. So what are we going to do about accepting the award if we win? Because you don't know. We didn't know whether we were going to win. And uh, Jay said, well, I got a speech. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah again shocker right <laughs> so it wasn't like we said i'd like to say this i like to, i got yeah. a speech but I, I got it so dad and i kind of looked at each other and we said okay so that was the end of that yeah, so handle, handle it. so afterwards of course when it goes off the rails and <laughs> which it did for jace and then dad's like, well, I wanted to say something, but Jace wouldn't shut up. So that's what he said in an interview we did with Kate. <laughs> that son of mine yeah, wouldn't call him shut mouth. up. I had stuff I wanted to say. Oh. So then Jace was like, hey, I got nominated. I said, whoa, whoa, nominated? You nominated yourself. There was there was no nomination. There was no vote. Uh, you just said. This wasn't I, a dem there was no democracy. Pro. You were the dictator. Oh, you were already boy. presenting a award. Then you accepted the speech of course he got all flustered because when we get up to go up stage zach has one job i'm sitting across from them so it's zach it's dad it's jason it's missy so dad is sitting in between jace and zach and the stage is right there like that door it's 30 feet away and all night we're seeing people win they go up the same set of steps right and there's things right there just following the deer trail yeah. just follow it's the deer yeah. trails right yeah. there yeah. Yeah. so we get up and I head straight for the steps. I walk up and get up on stage. I look back. Dad's wandering off down, meandering <laughs> through the meadows. He's going he to get a glass of tea. Where all the crew is. And they're just like looking all like frantic because they got cameras. They're deer in the headlights. <laughs> and look, Jace is right behind him. I look around. Zach's standing next to me. I said, I'm looking at Zach like, why did you not bring Zach? Yeah. He said, well, I kept trying to get him up. You know, he, Dad just went off. Because there's a, another set of stairs, a smaller one, that the crew goes up and down when they're filming stuff. Dad had it in his mind. That's the steps he was going to take. Yeah. <laughs> so Did he have his sunglasses on? No sunglasses. Uh, <laughs> but it was so awkward yeah. because it was like 30 seconds, which on an award show, that's a long that's time. That's forever. <laughs> I mean, that's your that's whole a, speech that's right a commercial. There. I should have just, what I should have, I messed up. I should have just stepped up to the mic. Just forget about Jason, Dad. You know, there's it's their Take podcast, over. but yeah. I should have just took over, yeah. accepted the award, yeah. said they're lost, yeah. they're not yeah. in the woods, right. and they're just walked off. That'd have been the end. Of, that would have been the ultimate. Ah, yeah. oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, they'd be walking up, you'd be walking down. <laughs> but is there anything more in character for Phil than to just go the other way? No, I mean, that, it, that, it was classic. Yeah. and Jace did have a good line. He, we got up. He said, "I don't know if y'all noticed, but." We got a little bit lost because we're not in the woods. But if you <laughs> if you get in the woods, trust me, you want to be with men like us, which I thought was pretty good. <laughs> just yeah. just yeah. don't right. follow us anywhere else. Not inside yeah. the theater. That's, right. that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, there ain't no landmarks. Let's uh, let's take a break, and we'll 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 talk more about those goons that you have to work with every <laughs> every week, Al. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> I'm pulling up my Rocket Money app right now, Are logging you? in. Can I see it? See no, you can't see it. It's what's got your, all my personal finances hey, what right there in it? one spot. I so know. I can check what my wife's doing, what my kids are doing, what my subscriptions are doing. If I forgot about one, they're going to let me know, hey, bro, you're paying for this, dumb dummy. You ain't been watching it. and you need, Here, click here and cancel it. It's that easy. They take care of all the stress of having a budget. And they, they, it's right there on your phone. It's that simple. Because you ain't, you going to pay your phone bill. You're going to pay that one. I mean, there ain't no doubt about that one. Uh, but look, what, what really gets people is most people don't even know how much subscriptions cost. You know, most people have 200 and they think it's about 80. Yeah. That's, that's ridiculous. A, that's bad math. That's, bad. How you, that's how you end up in a bind. But our friends over at Rocket Money 
can help you out of that. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Over 80% of people have subscriptions they forgot about. Guilty of that before. And chances are you're one of them, just like the rest of us here. So that Stars app, when you just wanted to watch one show or the free gaming trial you never actually used, you still paying for it? Them seven you just don't day trials about on your phone. Go and get your Ain't no, They've realized that 30 days is enough time for you to forget. That's where they're at. So Rocket Money will quickly and easily find your subscription for you. And for any you don't want to pay for anymore, this is the cancel button. It's that simple. You don't have to go through all the customer service. Are you sure you want to cancel? Are you sure you are really, are you really, 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 really sure you want to cancel and they make you hit it seven times? No, Rocket Money. Cancel one time. They take care of it Boom. for you. It also helps you manage all your finances in one place and automatically categorize your expenses so you need to track your budget in real time and get alerted if anything looks off. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average person up to $720 a year. That's that's a lot. That's, that's a raise right savings. there. So, look, you can stop throwing your money away today. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash duck. That's rocketmoney.com slash duck. Rocketmoney.com slash duck. And they take care of business for you. I'm just looking through this thing. Yeah. What is it? This is the uh, That's the program. Little, the little program that was in the program. That's the program for the Clove Awards. Oh, I'm changing the name of it. The clove a clove of garlic? Yeah, it's a, well, it's spelled with a K. I think that clove spelled with a C, but... Clove with a K. Yeah, Clove, clove with a K. With a K. Like the, the Clove Awards. I'm just Clove low hanging fruit. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what's going to be funny. Toby Mac wears a Jace hat. I like that. There are several Jace hats in there. <laughs> there it is. I think that's Impact why. Podcast nominees. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. So you recognize any of the other ones we were up against? Because the I, knew I, I recognize Cameron. DJ Tanner. Yeah. Um, which obviously Candace Cameron. I've heard of Jenny Allen, Bob. We all know Bob. Oh, Bob Goff, he's funny. Bob, I don't know any of the other. The most connected man in the world. So the first time I met Bob Goff, he we were I was speaking at a men's event in Fort Worth, and he was the main speaker. But that time I didn't know who he was, and I didn't even know he was the main speaker. To be honest, I knew I was what I was supposed to be doing. Yeah. So I'm in the green room, and I'm actually eating something. And I think I took old Trace. Remember Trace Pike they used to yeah, work here. So yeah. Oh yeah. Trace was with Kansas. Me. Oh Kansas. Yeah, oh, Kansas. Yeah. And so. So Bob Goff comes up and he sits like, but he's, he's like invades my space sits close. Like he's like right here. And I'm kind of looking, you know, and I'm eating. So I kind of look around. I'm like, how's it going? Put, <laughs> All right, he was hungry. <laughs> yeah, hey, and then he looks at me and he says, hello, my name is Bob Goff. I said, oh, I heard of you because I knew he was speaking. I heard of you. Yeah. And he <laughs> said, uh, he said, well, tell me what a day in the life of Al Robertson is like. <laughs> As he's sitting literally <laughs> eight inches from yeah, me. Yeah. Well, first I'm gonna take a bite of this brisket. <laughs> yeah, invade yeah. your space. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, yeah. it was just so strange. I was like, well, I guess Bob, I get to meet guys like you in green <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I didn't know what to say. Oh. He just kinda had me at a loss for words. Wow. Oh, but he was man. fantastic. He spoke that day. I was blown away because I didn't know much about him. So I, I did get a couple of his books after I heard him speak. He was good. Mm. Yeah, he's been a friend of the show since the show was the show. I mean, I met him through Willie and Corey. Yeah, and I knew they were they're, pals. They're, they're pretty pretty close friends. So, But it is cool whenever you are recognized for your hard work, especially in, in what we do. I mean, you know, we've obviously been at the top of the world as far as Duck Dynasty is concerned, but to still be able to impact people's lives and be recognized for it's awesome. Well, they were – and what we said, Jace and I both got – you know, we were not emotional, but I mean, we were both touched because you do this for the people that listen to you. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's face it. We know we're impacting people. You guys are doing the same thing. Yep. You know, it makes a difference. You get those emails signed and you, and you talk to people. I'm on the road a lot and talk to people. And, and so it's like, it's humbling because you realize that they're the reason you do it. And in our case, they're the reasons we were, rec we were recognized. I mean, somebody recognized, then they said, Hey, these guys are you know, they're the top because this was up to fans. It wasn't up to yep. industry or, you know, somebody else. So yep. it was, um, yeah, it's, it's humbling. Pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. Now, did y'all stick out in the awards show? Did, was, was it a noticeable difference <laughs> with not... Phil sitting down front versus, you know, say Toby Mack? Well, you know, Dad's at this place now. So on the podcast this week, we were talking about it, about grandfathers. And, and 
in, by his own admission, he said, well, I'm not necessarily <laughs> had been the best grandfather, you know, because he doesn't know half his grandkids, you know, things like that. Yeah, who's who's that and belong to? <laughs> yeah, who, now, who, who's this one? Who's he forgets this one? Jessica's name. So still. I said, Dad, you've always, I said, and I finally, I finally got, I finally found the right description for Dad's grandparenthood. I said, you're kind of a Mount Rushmore grandfather. You know, you're you're noticeable, you're respected, and you're and an you, icon. And you're there. And you're there. Yep. But really nobody wants to get too close. You know, it's just like he's <laughs> Yeah, there's <laughs> there's a fear, a yeah. fear of there is. here. Because we had this whole discussion because Jace's grandkids are afraid of him. Like Reed's kids, they cry every time he walks up. Oh yeah. And so and I was like, <laughs> so are the rest of us. Well, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> like that's impactful. <laughs> exactly. Oh, hey, hey. Welcome to the that's rest an of impact. the impact. Yeah. Hey, it might be the wrong one, but hey, it's an impact. But like I've noticed, like we were at the show the other night, Dad is, he's so iconic that he's almost like, when he's in a room like that, it's almost like he's a cardboard cutout because he's just there and he's looking with the blank stare. He did have the sunglasses on everywhere but up on stage. And he's just there, and people look at him, and they're like, is, it, is that a real person? <laughs> is that really him? I mean, he's so still. Look, look and see if he moves. Is that him, or is that a cutoff? Yeah. Uh, so it's man. kind of funny. He's kind of like a – Well, when Phil – like, I mean, obviously I've been here, I don't know, 14, 15 years now. The when, What I remember about Phil and his grandparenthood is if one of the grandkids ended up at Phil's house, it's because they were in trouble. Yeah. You never went down there for fun. No. Like, if you're like, hey, I'm going to Grandpa's house. Nobody ever yeah, said that about Phil. Fa- I'm going to go see Grandpa. It was Phil's boot camp for 72 <laughs> hours because you had done fouled up. <laughs> and and you were about to go work oh, your tail yeah. off for the next 72 yeah. hours to figure out, you know what? Maybe I ought not do that anymore. Well, you're, you're Phil right. loves free labor. You're right, Martin. And and like the line at church for 30 years was somebody wouldn't behave. You couldn't get their attention. Can somebody get them to feel? Yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> yeah, like, that's right. look, when you got taken out there, you were just dropped off. And so yeah. there's no way to leave because yeah. how would you ever get yeah. out of there? No you way. Got a ride. You ain't swimming the river and you yeah. don't know how to walk to get back. It's yeah. a lot you're like right. Angola. Really. <laughs> yeah. You got, right. got water on three sides. You've been, hey, you've been taken captive. You just don't know it. <laughs> that's right. Uh, <laughs> and you're about to ruin every pair of shoes you took with yeah. you because he says, don't worry, you don't need Yeah, boots. you don't need no boots. You don't need no boots. Hey, these are the words you don't ever hear from Phil. Oh, it only take a few minutes. Come on. Uh-huh. Come on. <laughs> 15, 20 minutes, boys. Yeah, 15, right, 15 20 minutes, 20 yeah. minutes. That's the most I heard boy. that Come my on. whole life. It was the biggest yeah. lie yeah. I ever heard. Yeah. You yeah. better take yeah, a hey, sandwich with you. Here you come stumbling in on the night sometime at night. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I know. First, my first day down there, it happened. <laughs> what he didn't, what he failed to tell me was that it was a 15 to 20 minute ride to the gate. <laughs> so yeah. That, yeah. there goes 15 to yeah, 20 of your, your 20 minutes. 20 yeah. minutes. Yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, it get took to the gate. It took yeah. 20 minutes to get to the flag. So <laughs> it was like, well, okay, we're we're obviously going to be longer than we thought. But well, it that, is Phil. That is prototypical Phil. I mean, yeah, he he's last resort for a lot of people. Like. Hmm. Need their attention, got send them to Phil's. And well, there was a you know there was a guy, there was a family at church, and uh, this guy was a, a bodybuilder, and I'd say he's probably about twenty year old young buck. You know, all, I mean, he looked like Conan, all beefed up, Conan the Barbarian. Yep. And uh, but you know, he had never really, he, even though he was at church, he had never really made the step. And his parents were worried about him, so the mom went to dad and said, "Would you talk to my son?" Because you know, I don't know if anybody can get through to him, it'd be you. And and he was like, yeah, who who is he? So we pointed over there and said, hmm. So like two weeks go by, and so they happen to be in the parking lot together. And he walks up next to this young man. He says, son, that's quite the physique you got on you. And he said when he said that, he just got – he just swole it up a little more, you know, when, you, when he said that. <laughs> and he said, thank you. Pump him he, up. Pump him up before you knock him so down. So then he said, I got uh-huh. one question for you. How are you going to get it out of the ground? He said, he went, Whew. <laughs> But that was the question. No, no, no. And then he said, he said, if you want to know more, head on down to the river. You know where I'm at. And he said, they got two days later, the kid shows up, winds up, you know, bringing him to Christ. So it's like, but that's classic dad, right? He knew mm. the right thing to say to this guy, yeah. and, you know, and he's been a Christian his whole life. No, no. When y'all started this, I was saying, this is going to be so profound. Okay, because Phil Robertson had someone do to him the same way, and the only one it could have been was Bill Smith. That's right. 
It was, I guarantee you, Bill Smith was God sent because, hey, Phil Robertson would not have listened to anyone else. That's right. So they just tried some of this fancy stuff. Bill Smith just hit him right between the eyes, just like Phil as a kid. Yeah. What are you going to do? With, how are you going to get it out of the ground, boy? That's right. Yeah. Si, you still been sleeping good? Oh, of course. You know it. That's because your head's floating on that cloud, ain't it? That's it, boy. It's on my pillow. Is it your pillow or my pillow? I thought it was my pillow. No, it's a 2.0. It's his pillow. Pillow. There you go. That one's the catch me out. Uh, That 2.0? You dadgum right it is. How did they make the pillow better? I... You know why? Because Mike Lindell, he's never satisfied. That's Ever. He's, he's, he's always working on something better. There you go. Look, and when Mike invented the my pillow, it had everything you could want in a pillow for then, but not for now. Look, the my pillow 2.0 has the patented adjustable fill of the original my pillow, but with a brand new fabric that is made of the temperature regulating thread. That's right. It's a thread. It's not a finish. That way, when you wash it dry, it doesn't go anywhere. It's there for the life of the pillow. That's like a spaceship for a pillow. I guarantee you. There's that much technology behind it. And we all know, let's be honest, when you're cooler at night, you sleep better. I've I've really learned that with having children now. And and you know why I should sleep better? Why is that? 100% made in the USA. You know that you're resting on America. A 10-year warranty. There you go. 60-day money-back guarantee, Martin. The MyPillow 2.0 is the softest, smoothest, and coolest pillow that you will ever own. Look, Johnny D just told you all the other stuff about it. We love the MyPillow stuff, whether it's the slippers, Cy loves the towels, the sheets, you name it. The pillows themselves are 2.0. It doesn't matter. You're going to love all of it. Just get it. It's that simple. And I'll tell you where to get it. You can go to MyPillow.com slash duck to get the all-new MyPillow 2.0. Right now, get the all-new MyPillow 2.0, and you get the second one absolutely free when you use promo code DUCK. Again, just go to MyPillow.com slash DUCK and use promo code DUCK for a buy one, get one on the MyPillow 2.0, or you can call 800-969-3137 and use promo code DUCK. Order now. Because when they're gone, they're gone. He told Smith when they first – the first night they sat down, uh, so Smith told me this years later. He said, well, I got – he said, Smith, I, I got to tell you something. I don't trust preachers, and I don't trust insurance salesmen. I put them in the same category. And Bill said, why is that? And he said, because their hair is slicked back, and they're go- that means they're going the other way with your money. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was his opening line yeah. to Smith, and Smith oh. just laughed because sure enough, he had oh. that Grecian formula hair, you know. Oh. But he said he Smith said he picked up his Bible and he said, "Well, Phil, what about this? Will you listen to this?" He said, "Now that I trust," and he said, "Well, everything I share is going to come right out of right here. here. I show it." And that's what he did. Yeah. Uh, it took three nights, yeah. you know. You know, yeah. I think so. Si, that's what you said was so profound. I wish we should make a movie about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 It, uh, maybe call it, I don't know, The Blind? Yeah. Yeah. Like the Blind come to see. Hey, yeah. The Blind come to see. Duck Blinds. Like, maybe we should. Oh, yeah. September's coming. Not winter. <laughs> September. September. Yeah. So. So they, they involved right. me in this thing. And I did a few spots where they was interviewing me. Uh-oh. Y'all. You know? And I kind of got teary out of there when he was talking. And I said, well, you want to stop for a minute? I said, no, you got to understand. I said, you're asking me questions about my brother. Yep. Okay, who I was seriously worried about. Okay, because he was going the wrong direction. Whole hog the wrong direction. And he was dragging me along with him. Okay. It made Kay feel better, okay, but it didn't help nothing. Yep. All it was doing was putting me in a bad situation. Because they've laid it all out there, talking about, hey, dirty underwear, the whole nine, you're all of it. <laughs> okay, nothing's hidden. I said, yeah, it's kind of, you know. It's not easy. Yeah. <clears throat> I just, you know, like me, like I said, well, what are you going to do with it? Yeah, I will tell you what I'm gonna do with it. It's gonna make me shed a few tears, but I'm gonna go watch it. Hmm. I've done been through it. Yeah, but I'm gonna watch the new product. Okay, that's the great thing about this. Okay, is that God says it's this way. Once you go down and you reenact 
Jesus Christ, the Son of God's death, burial, and resurrection. Once you reenact that, you are a new creation. Every filthy thing that I've ever done has been erased. Okay, because that was left, guess what? They buried the old sign. Mm -hmm. The old bad one, he's in the ground. That was the funniest, that was the coolest thing my brother has ever told me when I come in on leave one time. All his buddies was coming back to him, trying to bring him back, you know, to the devil. And what, what he told them was the truth. Guys, you're looking for a dead man. Mm -hmm. He's buried. I've done buried him and put him away. He's gone forever. You're looking at the new creation. You know, which is the greatest thing there is about, you know, Jesus. That's right. You know? Hope. Well, hey, it's, it's new. So I don't got to preach it. We're going to have to bring you back. Well, you bring out the, the, uh, bring out the best. Well, hey, <laughs> you call out the blind, and hey, that's preaching, Okay. Because it shows a man that was on the wrong path that run into Jesus and, hey, got on the right path, and he's been on it ever since. Mm. And not only has he been on that path, he shared what he learned with everybody he comes in contact with. Yeah. And yeah. with the advent of the show and, this, and his podcast, their podcast, however you want to say it, he's still blazing a trail on that path. and. That's it. Adding people behind him. Still and, he, and he won't ever get off of it. <laughs> no, he ain't going to get off of it. <laughs> and neither will I or will I or no, Chase. No, won't none of I mean, no. why would you? Dance with the I'm one not. That, dance with the one that yeah. brought you. You know I'm what not. I mean? I'm going with the winner. Yeah. I'm going with the option that uh, involves a win. <laughs> everybody everybody loses on the other one. This is everybody yeah. likes there's to a chance we home. win on this one. I'm well, going with that one. Way to me? go. Give me that one, you know. But it is, um, it is wild to think about. It's, yep. it's kind of, man. I mean, you just think about how many people that Phil has impacted. Through, and, and I keep going back to impact because that's the title of the category. Yeah. So I mean, that you know, that is, yep. a, that's a cool thing, man. I mean, he's, you know, Sai brings up you know, a good point because you've got we were, we were talking about Peter on our podcast and the impact he obviously had on the kingdom, and but you know, Andrew, his brother was already a follower of John the Baptist and he and Philip. And so he's the one that was thinking, man, if I could just get Peter to Jesus, something would happen. He he saw it in him. And so Sai, we were talking about this on the podcast, because Zach was on the podcast. So we were talking about Jan's role in that. Oh, she no. what she said, she was a prophetess. Cause she said, if we can get my brother to Christ, he will lead thousands to Jesus. And she was right on the money, and she literally went into the bar <laughs> to make it happen. No, no, you know? no, no, that's the thing, okay, out of all. Your little the, sister did that. The whole family. The whole family had had written Phil off as a loss. But I mean, every one of us. Yeah. Except one. Yep. And my sister jumped on the whole family with both feet and said, y'all are, oh, no. It made her mad. <laughs> and she got, she showed her her boldness. She jumped on us all with both feet, telling me, hey, you ought to be ashamed still. That's your brother, blood kin, that you've written off. And you don't know it. You can't see it, but I can. If I can ever get him, someone to tell him about Jesus. That's him. You're not going to believe the people that Phil Robertson would bring to Christ. Well, Jan always saw the best in everybody, too. She well, did. No, no. There's no other way you can explain Well, I'm Gordon. guilty of that. Right. I'm guilty of that. <laughs> you know, I am, too, because I am. You are. Because yeah. you snooker me. Well, hey, you just snooker me. I still love you, and I still try to, you know, I still want the best for you. Yeah. I never look for the bad in people. Yeah. It's there, because people ask me what I, I, I learned from Vietnam. That, oh, I can go to the dark side that quick because I went there. It's already there. It's right beside you well, anytime no, no. you it's want always, it. The door is always right there for you to step through. Yeah. Just like Christ's door. Knock and I'll open it. You can come in my home. That's yeah. right. Problem is, you ain't got to knock on the other one. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. You'll go there. It's, it's stay open. You'll go there. Yeah. Very easy. <laughs> 
It's a swivel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like the saloon door. It's saloon it goes doors. both ways. They, they're always ready. <laughs> they're yeah, always they're, ready. Yeah. yeah. And they're surrounded by banana peels. It don't take <laughs> oh, yeah. a second. Yeah. You, sure. yeah, you slap, slip and slide. You can go there quickly. <laughs> well, let's take another break. We'll be back right after <laughs> this. We're back. Small little break there. Everybody get a little shot of water. Shot of coffee if you got one. But uh shot of tea if you me. Yeah. Just whatever you need. <laughs> so people ask the most often asked question uh with me on the road is about you. And it's always the same one. Is Sad the same as he is on camera as he is, you know, off camera? And I always say he's the most authentic among us. He does he changes none. Whether it's a a group of people like we walked into here today is a group of people here. It's the same side that's on the podcast. And then they asked me if you're as crazy as you are on the show. I think all that is a compliment. It is a compliment. Mm-hmm. I do. I you're really authentic. Do. Yeah. Hey, I don't mind being crazy. I tried being normal for 10 minutes. They like to kill me. 10 minutes. I had to give it up. Well, you know, side, uh, there's a lot of dementia, unfortunately, that's been in our family. Yeah. And so dad's line about you was, is that you were born with dementia. I had it. We just got used to it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, maybe that's the reason I'm still alive. That's right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You just have been right. the same all the yeah. way through. Right. There's no changing. So that's that's the feels line on you. Right. But you were mentioning about being in tears or so. Because I haven't seen the movie yet. Have you seen it? I've seen the the part I've seen, like when we had the first just a clip, showing. right? Yeah. yeah, that's all I've seen is a yeah. few clips, and th- and now the trailer's out. So I think in a few weeks we're actually going to get to watch it. But so they, when I saw the trailer, I just came through my email. I mean, nobody even official said. I guess I'm part of the email fan club or whatever. So it came to my email. Well, I watched it. I immediately was in tears, and so it was amazing. It was because not only was it because it's their life, but like I thought about because you said that a minute ago. This was my brother. When there's a scene where the three kids and mom are running out of the trailer, his dad has just kicked us out. When I'm watching that, you know, just three seconds on screen, I mean, tears immediately beca- begin to flow because I was one of the ones running out of the trailer. I was about to say, you're the oldest one running I, out I re- of the trailer. I still remember all of it. That's yeah. exactly well, right. No, 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 because to you, and this is kudos to you, okay, you had to grow up quicker than normal for child, for children. Right. Because you had to be the man. I had to take care of my brother. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You know, and like when I, I, people don't understand when I say that's my brother, you know, I get a lot of this stuff from second hand. Okay. Especially about, okay, he threw him out and came the kids or, you know, just threw him out of the house and said, hey, get, I'm sick of you. You know, and you're saying, you know, you know I saw already said I was concerned about him. Well, when you throw your family away, have yeah. you lost your mind, you stupid idiot? <laughs> <laughs> and look, he was he was uh, of such uh, character. Yeah. That, that night, we drove across town to my Uncle Harold's house, who was their older brother, and he took us in, but he told Mom, and I still remember it. I was standing there when he told her. He said, okay, I'm afraid of him as much as you are. Y'all can stay tonight, but after that, you're going to have yeah, to, you go, find, you have to find some go. other place to go. Yeah. I mean, that's how bad dad was. Hey, that his own brother was like. Don't think about that. His older brother scared of him? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, that, that's how far he had gone. And that's why I was concerned about him, and I couldn't say nothing because I, I'm the younger of the of the family. You about to climb on him like a cat squirrel. Oh no, right? yeah. Hey, he'll be, you, know, <laughs> you don't want to mess with him. Hey, oh no, I'm like I'm like Harold. Oh, hundred percent. I was scared of him too. I mean, Look, I used to. So we used to run this bar, you know, that's very much featured in the movie. And I'd climb up in a in a, a magnolia tree. It's a big magnolia tree right behind that bar. And of course, back in these days, this is early '70s, so it's segregated. So you had the black part yep. out back, and the whites are up front. And there would be mischief in the middle. Oh yeah, and so, but the the peacemaker in the whole thing was Dad. He used that a pistol stuck in the belt, and he you know, had a rifle or a long gun somewhere nearby. But I've seen him. I used to watch him whip a man almost nightly. Oh, yeah, of course they were drunk, and he wasn't. Yeah, you know, it's funny because he used to drink all the time. But when he was working, he was sober. He was kind of like a bouncer or something, I guess. He figured, you know, this is my role. But I mean, he was a bad dude. 
Like, mm. cause you know, he's a college athlete, you know, he was put yeah. together. He could run how many miles in the woods? Oh, oh. Miles hey. through the woods, squirrel had come back with a sack of 60 squirrels. Well, all it, all it takes is even somebody like me, just go, just go run around with Phil for a day. And you look at him, you're like, yeah, okay. I get it. <laughs> that's yeah. right. Oh no, that's I mean, you see the way he moves the thing he does, his hands are like mitts. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm like, oh no, he used to yeah, look you like, didn't, you didn't want to mess with this. He man. used to look like, like Popeye the sailor man. His forearms was twice as big as his bicep. But, you know, I will okay. say this. The one thing I've always found interesting since we have you here is you, Al, constantly refer to Phil as dad. Yes. And your brothers all call him Phil. Right. Like, I mean, if Jace doesn't. Because I am Jace normal and they are not. That's... Jace doesn't even say dad. He'll say my dad. Have yeah. you ever known? He, yeah, won't, yeah. he will not look at him no. or even reference him as dad. No, and he, he calls him Phil to, to him. Yeah, he calls him Phil, oh, 100%. Yeah. People but, ask us that all the time because to a lot of people it, it seems disrespectful, but it's really not because mom and dad don't we, – we, none of us are quite sure why they do it. We assumed it's because the business was in our house. Yeah. And so they would say, let me get Phil or let me get Kay. And so – and that may be true. I don't know. I just said it's because they're both very strange people. I mean, <laughs> uh, Jason, <laughs> Willie. Obviously, my job was to take care of them. I did a poor job. And <laughs> – it's evident hey. because all you got to do is follow him around. You did the best you could. I did you, the you, best you, I could. You didn't know I any was better. Working. I was no, only no. a few years older yeah. myself. Hey, you was only a couple years older. You yeah. did a fabulous job. We, we're alive. Yeah. That's what you're I alive and, hey, you turned out pretty decent anyway. Yeah. You know? yeah. I tell people all the time, I'm a walking miracle because I was raised on the campus of Louisiana Tech University by a 17-year-old and a 19-year-old. Now you stop and think about that for a second. You, you see any of these seven? Oh, my no. granddaughter's 17 oh, now. No. The thought of her raising me as a child is frightening. And yet here I am. You talk about God's providence oh, having no. a hand on you. Oh, no. I was oh, raised on oh, a college no. campus. That's the thing about our whole life. Okay, is I can see God, the one about the sand, walking in the sand. Yep. He says, Where were you, Lord? He said, Them are not your footprints, son. That's me. I'm I, carrying you. I was carrying you there. And I can see that all throughout the, all the Robertson's life. Yeah. Dad and Mom, you know, Phil and Kay, you and Lisa, everybody. And you know what's ironic, Sai, is that this whole period of time where, that the movie's based on, which is basically Mom and Dad, well, even y'all, you're, you're, there's someone yep. playing you as a kid. Yeah. So your childhood, a lot of trauma, a lot of difficulty, their teenage years, them getting married, and then the really rough time before he became a Christian. So that's the time period of the movie. But it's really interesting because out of those wild years, God's hand was still protecting Dad because God always knew what he was going to do one day. So he should have been killed several times. He's got, we were talking about this on the podcast. God always sees things that aren't, that are. That are. That's yeah, exactly he right. sees them as they are. Here's the, here's, the like double, here's the double ironic twist. So during this period of time, right at the end, I mean, literally months away from him becoming a Christian, he winds up having an affair, and I'm sure there were multiple affairs, but he has one with a woman who gets pregnant and has a child that he knows nothing about. And then 44 years later, Boom. she comes into our lives, yeah. and now we have this relationship with her, and she starts <laughs> telling me her story, and it's like incredible because God's hand was on her her whole, whole childhood. Time. Because she yep. should have been, a lot of bad things should have happened yep. to Phyllis, and they didn't. Yep. And so I can only attribute that to God knew one day we would all be together again. And she married, she's been married to the same guy for 26 years, has two sons. She's she a believer. Re she was religious, and none of the rest of the family, her family, was religious. Yep. She, nobody else was educated. Where did that come her. from? Right. Because Phil wasn't religious. Right. At the time. It's just like a great about, story of providence. Yeah. It really is. I yeah. mean, and, yeah. and that's the next story we got to tell. Oh, yeah. We'll get to get mom. I mean, a uh, dad and and Phyllis together to tell that story of God's hand because yeah. that's the next book. If we do the next book, so and I all when I think I think of the song Daddy's Hands. Yeah. Okay. You don't think you know when you can say okay, I have a heavenly Father. Think about heavenly Father hands. He's always got he's got you back. Yep. Yeah, you know, and I've seen it in my my life so many times when I didn't have nothing, couldn't see any way out. A miracle just appears. Yeah. Money comes out of nowhere. 
You know, I'm not saying it was like Phil and, and his kids. You know, a check from Japan. Yeah, I'd go for one of them right about now. <laughs> them diapers. I'm looking for those, those Japanese. <laughs> I keep checking the mailbox. Ain't nothing from Tokyo come hey, in here. I'm telling you. But I you hear got, the stories, though. You got to think about that, okay? Guys <laughs> tell him, hey, wait till the mail, mail runs. Oh, Phil saying, hey, go get the stupid mail, woman. Yeah. Hang on. He's, there you go. Wait. Well, God is good. There ain't no doubt well, about that. About Al, thanks for joining us today. Yep. We're gonna um we're gonna bring J D back in for the for the email segment. He's the keeper of all things email. Yeah, yeah. So, he is the um, email king. Yep. And um and but no, thanks for joining us. Hey, you're welcome to stop by the fun podcast anytime you want to. By the way, you've you laughed more today than you yeah. have on Unashamed. And no doubt about it. In quite a while. Usually there, I'm having to just be a beard whisperer and make it work. So yeah. I like being a guest. Oh, uh, so you're welcome here anytime. But thanks for coming in, yeah, Al. And uh, let's take a break. We'll be back right after this with the hello at duckcallroom.com yeah. mailbox. Get in that mailbox, boy. See what's happening. I was sitting outside the door just trying to hear. Yeah, this room's very soundproof. Yeah. Well, yeah. we didn't have nobody yelling either. You know, Al. Al kind of low. Al. He's low key. He keeps everything low key. He's got a professional speaking voice, almost yeah. like he's been award doing it for 30 voice. years. Oh, and award winning now. Yeah. Yeah. Award winning. winning. Well, I hate I missed it. That was yeah. good. No, I'll have was... to tune in on Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you can find that. He got his he got his little shots in that all of us says so fun. Uh, they didn't take none at Galvin, but that's because they were uh, best friends. One day we need to peel one. back those layers of that onion too. Galvin and He took shots at Al. all of us? That kind of, but it's fine. Yeah, it's, fine. it's no big deal. I, he, he, I but will he, have to. Well, I don't know if he took them out of us, but he kept some for coming because he talked about his nice vest that he wore to the awards show. Right. <laughs> but he, he went straight. He, he went straight. Up. He went straight Eminem on Eight Mile. He just made fun of himself so that we were like, so that oh, we couldn't get to okay, it. Okay, cool. That's cool. Um, I noticed he wasn't in a vest when we just passed. No, nah, but he was in all black. He's I mean, the man black. is. He's he's good. That he's, felt like the the most. I literally walked in. Al said, "Hey, good catching up with you." I said, "See, Al, it's just everyday life in the neighborhood." Yeah, there you go. See, I mean, Al, we that's what happens when your neighbor pass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we're back. Hello at duckcallroom.com. That's the email address. Johnny D. I got some light ones today. Honestly, good. there's well, we one that we we need to you know kind of. My one guy needs a little help, but there's there's some very interesting ones that I have never really thought Is he about. Building something? Huh? No. Anyway, Noah from Kentucky. He's been listening for over a year now. Loves it. That's a long time. But he's been listening basically every episode, but he has one question that he has to know the answer to. What time? If you had to, I think six o'clock on Tuesdays and Thursdays. But no, if you had to perform a song during the Super Bowl halftime show, what song would everyone choose? It's very interesting. Perform a song? Boy, I tell you, what if you could get the whole crowd to sing "Love One Another"? Godwin just took like the Super Bowl it. to church. I Man, like it. I thought Godwin was going to go I with Rush. Rush. I thought, <laughs> that I just would knew, be awesome. I just knew Katmandu was coming. No, because hey. I remember we used to go to uh, Oklahoma to Tulsa. They used to have a workshop up there every year. Yep. We'd, we'd go up there, and the first time I went in that big arena, and they sung love one another and it was just awesome that's the one with the four parts yeah yep yeah you hit that bass no oh, no. oh <laughs> god is love <laughs> <laughs> anyway we can't that was pretty cool but could you imagine eighty thousand people yeah. doing that going yeah. church of christ melodies and harmony that would be legit yeah, yeah. i think you just won the you should have gone last yeah, yeah, you really should. I burned it. It's like else. anything else we Now say nobody can really say what they want. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I'd be. yeah. Si, what would you choose? <laughs> Don't And you can't say that. Well, no, no. I would. One that was in my mind right now is, hey. I don't need uh, your rocking chair? No. Hello, Another darling. one bit the dust. Another one bites the dust. It's a, this is the Super dust. Bowl, not a minor league hockey game. Well, hey, look. <laughs> It's my Super Bowl. I can think what I want to. Yeah. Bow, bow, it's whatever he bow. wants. That's right. Hey, song. Song. My choice was, hey. All right. Johnny Over D, what Hall, Oates Oates mm, oh. Hall and Oates song are you picking? Hall and Oates would be <laughs> Why is Hall and Oates not done a Super Bowl, by the way? Well. We should know. start a petition. Because they're he, done everywhere he, else. He, he won't get out of his basement. Hey. That's true. It's a garage. And a Hall that's and Oates Super Bowl would be awesome. 
That last Super Bowl was weird. Um, all the Super Bowls are weird. I don't know. I'm not really a singer. <laughs> I'm not either. I can't. I mean, a tune in a I bus. think if I had to, because I'd be, you know, a bad karaoke or, I mean, man, he he went with love one I another. Say what you want to. And I was gonna go like friends in low places. I feel you like go. that would get. You I feel it. like that would get the crowd just hey, fired. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, hey, well, I like crowd favorites. Like, like, yeah, let's you, fire up Sweet Caroline. Hey, like, there you go. See, eighty thousand people hey, doing bump, bump, bump. Are you kidding? Cool. Like Caroline. That's I'm I'm playing the one that everybody knows. Yeah, like right. and that, everybody can sing along. Yeah, that, I guess it depends on where the the Super Bowl would be because friends in low places might not have the same pool in like <laughs> New York City. <laughs> but if but, it was but if it was in New Orleans, we we'd be or Dallas or Jerry's World. Yeah, yeah if it was in <laughs> Dallas, them people go nuts. Because I go. would need people singing with me. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't go with, like, Journey. You just you just get something that everybody knows. Everybody needs be to know it. Yeah. Hey, junk, uh, jukebox hero, baby. Oh, well, Willie just came in the room. Yeah, well, hey, jukebox go, boy. Jukebox Foreigner. hero. Oh, yeah. That is a good song. It is a good song. All right. Next email from Michelle from New Mexico. Las Cruces, New Mexico, which is oh. funny because I know a few people in Las Cruces, Las New Cruces. Mexico. Um, you know Michelle? I don't know Michelle. We do now. But now we do. Michelle, thanks for emailing in. So she said she knows we're used to spicy foods, but spicy she food. has to know if we've ever had the new Mexican red or green chili. Have y'all ever had that? No. Red or green? So. I haven't. I don't know what it is. In Moab, in Moab, Utah, I had something that was like known for their green chili sauce. I don't know if that's the same New Mexico green yeah, chili or not, but that stuff was fire. It was good. It's hot. No, it's just good. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was it was warm, warm. but it wasn't wasn't overbad. No, it was very good. Okay. Very good. Okay, because and the reason I this is kind of a strange email to bring up, but one time me and Willie were in a place called Farmington, New Mexico. They're like, hey, we're gonna take you to eat New Mexico. New, new Mexican food. And I was like, time out. That's just Mexican food, and y'all are from here. So you're labeling it new Mexican food. Yeah. No, it's very different. Is it? And it is. New Mexico's got some things figured out when it comes to new Mexican food. Oh, really? It's not old Mexican food. It's new Mexican food. Well, and it's that good. chili stuff. And you basically just grab like a tortilla, rip it off, get a piece of pork, and dip it in that red or green chili. Oh. And get to town. I like, I like what are way, you talking? I like the way that sounds. Oh, it was good. Yeah. I'm generally I like against to having to up, um, assemble my meal, but I like that. that oh, no, no, I like you the idea taco of the order, taco. not a yeah. heat order. No, I'm not. Yeah, Dip I'm, I'm going to get boys. the tacos. I'm not yeah. paying extra to make it myself. I'm yeah. out on that. I, I just, well, this I have a hard stance. No, this wasn't that. like this was like a, a appetizer. Oh, but yeah. boy, oh, was it in? Oh, that would be. Oh, I like to sop gravy up with that biscuit. One more. Yeah, Might as well. Fire away. All right, Jesse emails in. He says he goes by Creek. Creek. So his name's either Watch Jesse here, or Creek. Creek. That's I'm going to call him Creek. He got shot in Walk Tombstone. Through Jesse's dream. Where's he from? It may be Creek. It doesn't say where he's from. Yeah. Right, maybe it's Creek. Some of it's Creek. Creek. Yeah. I don't know. But right. he that wants to meet you one day, Godwin. You got, like what does Jesse want? You got any events coming up, Godwin? Yeah. Where? I got one coming up in Mississippi. Then I got one coming up in Kansas. There you go. Kansas City. Kansas City. Yeah, he, he wants City. to meet yeah, Godwin real bad. And then I got one in August. Where are we going? Tennessee. That's October. October. That's yeah. October. August, I'm going to Florida. Good luck finding him. He's a man that's on the move. Yeah. But that, he, he said you're one of his heroes, Johnny Goblin. Good and his great. other question is, how do you know when you've met the right one? He's been with a girl for almost a year and is wondering how he should feel if he's supposed to marry her or not. Let's go body slam her. If she can take it, she's hey, the one. That's right. There it is. All right. Hey, we'll see y'all next what time. Right here. Hey, hey, we're talking about God. playful. Look at God. With what I did. Hey, body <laughs> slam her, boy. Hey. I, I refuse to believe that. Come up there and dog <laughs> well, What is your advice to Jesse about Hey, how do you know? If you've been around her for a year, you, you've you got a grasp on who she is as a person. Yeah. And yeah. so I would say. I would say if you don't know after a clear, year. Then, yeah. You you either know. Or you, if you got some reservations, I don't know that they're leaving any, yeah. after a year. You yeah, still if got, you you got you doubt, I would say, hey. 
No. If you ain't put them to rest yet, or no. if you're just in denial that you know this is a deal and you're wanting us to confirm it, then yeah, that's no. probably it too. But you you know that answer. You, you don't have to worry about us knowing that answer. Like, Yeah, we don't know. You know her. Yeah. I, I don't know who she is. I, I know she's Jesse's girl, which would be another great be yeah. another great Super Bowl song. That's Everybody it, boy, knows it. There you go. So there you go. Way to tie that in, Johnny D. Well, yeah, hey, even know you did the it. Question: Is she gonna be Jesse's girl or not? It depends yeah. on Fee Body Shop. Hey, I gotta yeah. be honest with you. Hey. I think you should marry her alone, just so y'all can play that at y'all's wedding. Which I yeah. guess, if it was a different girl, she would still be Jesse's girl. Uh, right. So that doesn't really work. But yeah, yeah. Don't go by Creek anymore, man. Go by Jesse because yeah. that song's awesome. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Jesse's girl. Um, yeah, um, it's uh, you know. Yeah, you know. And if yeah. you're looking for validation, that means yes. If you're looking for a reason to say no, that means no. Yeah, you know. You already know the answer. You, there ain't nothing we can tell you that's gonna change that. So Jesse's girl. Is her name Stacy? Because y'all could have like a really cool like song deal. You know, Stacy's mom's got it going on. Jesse's girl. Like they could really. Uh oh. They Stacey could mom. really have some fun. Uh oh. At karaoke nights. <laughs> Uh, hey, like, and, their, and their reception would be lit. Like, <laughs> That's right. Hey, it'll be uh, like, shit, you imagine Stacy's mom out there dancing. That's right. like, hey, she's got it going on. There you go. All right, you ready for send us out of here? Yeah. First absolutely. Thessalonians one three. We continually remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Everything you do needs to be coming from our Lord Jesus Christ. Exactly. If you don't know him, get to know him. We want you to know him. We want to meet you in heaven one day. That was the quickest episode I've hey. ever been a part of. There you go. Guaranteed. And with that, we'll leave you and see you next time.